I received a request to do a video on natural antibi antibiotics. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to talk about various natural substances uh, that could be used as antibiotics. Uh, these antibiotics, the, of course, the advantage of natural antibiotics is they have far less side effects compared to prescription or medicinal antibiotics. Uh, now, these natural antibiotics have a long history of use. Before penicillin was discovered in the 1940s, several of these natural substances were used as antibiotics. A good example of that is garlic. Uh, during World War I, when the soldiers were injured, uh, they had a high chance of becoming infected, which would lead to amputations of limbs. And uh, what they used to do is they, they would apply garlic directly on the wounds of these injured soldiers, and it would prevent an infection and possibly save these soldiers from amputation. So um, uh, there's a couple of them that, that are listed, uh, but you, know, you have to understand how do antibiotic drugs work. They work by inhibiting the replication of, of uh, bacteria. They prevent bacteria from replicating. They also, uh, some of the, most of the, a lot of the antibiotics work by damaging components of the cell wall, which uh, causes the bacteria to basically kill themselves. And, and other, uh, other uh, uh, antibiotics just outright destroy bacteria. Uh, the uh, natural antibiotics work in a similar fashion. Uh, you know, the, uh, the various compounds uh, that are found in plants, for example, they're collectively known as phytochemicals. These exist, uh, these various phytochemicals, phyto means plant, by the way, they can include phenols, polyphenols, terpenoids, essential oils, alkaloids, lectins, and polypeptides. But these are the uh, active ingredients of the various natural antibiotics. So let's talk about some of these natural antibiotics. Honey. Honey was first known for its medicinal effects around 400 BC. It goes way back. It's been used as a topical cream or ointment to treat wounds, uh, infections, and to soothe burns. Uh, it can actually promote better wound healing and reduce the appearance of scars. So uh, it, it, because it's sticky and moist, it, it, it's a, it has a kind of a, a unique combination to help coat wounds, protecting them from dirt and contaminants, while allowing the type of environment needed for tissue repair. Some of the properties in honey that provide healing benefits include hydrogen peroxide, uh, which prevents bacterial growth, and also honey uh, instills a, a low pH level. Uh, in other words, it produces a more or less acidic type of environment, which prevents the bacterial replication that can cause infection. Uh, honey is actually what they call a broad-spectrum antibacterial because it's known to prevent the growth of at least 60 different strains, including MRSA or MRSA, methicillin-resistant uh, uh, type of bacteria, which this type of MRSA is a type of... Um, infection that uh, involves a resistance to most antibiotics. Uh, the, uh, over the years, the constant and heavy use of antibiotics has led to a, a resistance where a lot of the popular antibiotics that are prescribed just don't work as well. So they've had to come out with new antibiotics to try and overcome what they call antibiotic resistance. Somehow the organisms that, have, that cause infections and disease have evolved to uh, become resistant to the uh, effects of antibiotics. So they've had to come up with new ones. Um, so another type of natural antibiotic is garlic. As I mentioned, garlic was used extensively in World War I to treat injured soldiers to prevent uh, infections that might lead to amputations. Uh, garlic can destroy bacteria in test tubes and it's, a, and it's effective against MRSA, MRSA, and Candida albigans, which is a type of yeast infection. Uh, the, these uh, MRSA is, as I said, resistant to a lot of typical antibiotics. And, and cal Candida albigans, which is commonly called a yeast infection, that used to be easily um, uh, treated by giving antifungal drugs, 
But over the years, Candida albicans has also evolved to become more resistant to antifungal drugs. But garlic apparently can still kill both of these type of uh, uh, bacteria. Uh, garlic has also been used to treat bacterial infections caused by salmonella bacteria and E. coli, which are most commonly associated with various urinary tract and bladder infections and so on. Uh, now, unfortunately, most of the evidence for this has been shown in vitro. In other words, where they expose the bacteria to garlic, let's say in a test tube or in a Petri dish. There's not a lot of human evidence, but there's a lot, a ton of anecdotal evidence. Uh, in other words, that garlic has been used to scent for centuries to treat wounds and prevent infection. The garlic can be consumed in many forms, including raw, roasted, or even marinated in olive oil to create garlic concentrate. Uh, now, to, um, it's safe. It's safe. Garlic is safe to ingest, and it's usually not allergenic. However, using large amounts of garlic can lead to gastrointestinal problems and cause a person to admit a uh, garlic-scented odor. And that's the reason why some of the garlic supplements that are sold today, they're what they call enterically coated, where it prevents the uh, release of some of the uh, potent sulfur compounds that cause the garlic, typical garlic odor, which uh, which uh, a lot of people uh, are, uh, are off-putting. Uh, uh, anecdotally, uh, there was a guy years ago, they used to call him the missing link. I talked about him in a, one of the videos I did with Rick Drayson. This guy was a very strange, eccentric character who used to eat two full cloves of garlic before coming to the gym. I guess it, he felt that the garlic made him stronger. Believe it or not, there's some evidence that garlic can actually increase testosterone, so maybe there's some method to his madness. But in any case, this guy, I remember when he used to drink out of the water fountain at the original Gold's Gym, the water fountain would reek of, of strong, pungent garlic odor for as long as two hours after he drank out of it. Uh, so anyway, that's garlic. Uh, there's another possible natural antibiotic is ar ar uh, oregano, oregano essential oil. It's a plant that's found in the same family as the mint family. And uh, when it's put in a concentrated oil form, it can have medicinal properties. Uh, essential oil is not the same thing as oil of oregano, which is not as concentrated. Oregano essential oil has benefits primarily because of a substance called carvacrol. That's the active phytonutrient. Uh, oregano has been shown to be helpful for sinus infections and skin fungal infections, but oregano essential oil should not be taken internally. It should be used only topical. Just a few drops paired with a carrier oil like almond oil, olive oil, or coconut oil should be applied to the affected area. As far as sinus infections, oregano oil should be diffused in the air and breathed in. Uh, so that's oregano. Another one is thyme, thyme essential oil. Thyme has a distinct smell that sets it apart from natural household cleaning products. It can kill various bacteria, including antibiotic resistant bacteria. It it's a, seems to be effective against Staphylococcus and E. coli bacteria, as, whether, uh, other, as well as other common strains. Uh, it, sh it should never be used internally and has not been proven to treat any infections when consumed, inhaled, or applied. You never want to use, take it internally. It can cause serious injury of the esophagus or lining of the gastrointestinal tract. The active ingredient in thyme is eugenol. That's what makes thyme oil antibacterial. Large amounts of it can cause liver toxicity and other serious damage, even when you ingest just a small amount. If you're going to use it uh, topically, it needs to be heavy diluted with a carrier oil. If you don't dilute it, it can irritate the skin or lead to inflammation. Uh, if, you, if you have elevated thyroid hormone release, hyperthyroidism, or high blood pressure, you should not use thyme essential oil topically. Another one is called Mira Extract. Mira is spelled M-Y-R-R-H. It's used for many purposes, but it can kill various pathogenic bacteria, including E. coli, Candida albicans, which is not bacteria. It's a yeast. P. aeruginosa, Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA, and, and, and K. pneumonia. 
Uh, it, it's able to kill off greater than 99% of these bacteria in lab studies. They, uh, it uh, mirrors often additive uh, formulations like mouthwash, creams, and other extracts. If you ingest mirror essential oil, it can cause diarrhea and other dis digestive problems. It ne it, now, you should never ingest the essential oil. It's strictly for topical use, and you only need to use a little bit of it. Echinacea is a plant that's popularly used to help treat colds and flu. Uh, the, the studies vary on the effectiveness of echinacea for this purpose. However, I, uh, my, based on the research I've done, let's say you're taking echinacea to treat a flu. It's best used within the first 24 hours of being infected with a flu. Uh, if you use it, if you take echinacea within the first 24 hours of, of a flu or influenza infection, it cuts down the number of sick days by as much as three or four days. If you take echinacea past 24 hours, it has very little effect. So it has to be taken before the virus kind of spreads throughout your body. Uh, it's also effective against staphyl uh, Staphylococcus pyrogens, which is the type of bacteria that causes strep throat and toxic, so toxic so uh, shock syndrome. Uh, it seems to promote uh, topical wound healing, and it also seems to help, uh, like I say, various bacterial respiratory infections. Uh, the studies, again, are paradoxical. Some of them show no effect. Some of them show a good effect. Golden seal is another herb that uh, it's consumed either a tea or capsule form. It seems to be effective for bacterial infections that cause diarrhea, respiratory problems, as well as urinary tract infection. It's, it's also effective against MRSA and other resistant bacterial strains. Again, there's not a lot of high-quality evidence showing that it works that well in humans. Turmeric, also uh, the active ingredient being curcumin, uh, seems to have anti-inflammatory. It helps increase immune response, and it seems to be effective against both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria in laboratory samples. It's also effective against the bacteria that causes MRSA, as well as E. coli. The uh, uh, it has antibacterial against the pathogenic uh, bacteria found in gum infections and tooth infections. So that's turmeric. Uh, now, how safe are these? These natural antibiotics are much safer than, uh, than, than the pharmaceutical drugs. However, the, uh, the problem with uh, the natural herbal antibiotics is that uh, very often they're not standardized properly and the, and the actual, let's say, active ingredient content may vary from one pill to the next, which means that they're not quite as reliable as drug antibiotics. But drug antibiotics should always use with caution because drug antibiotics not only wipe out pathogenic bacteria, they don't work on viruses, by the way. You never take an antibiotic to treat any type of virus infection like the flu. They have no effect except they might help prevent secondary bacterial infections that occur during the course of a viral, viral infection. Uh, but the uh, problem with the uh, pharmaceutical antibiotics is they knock out a lot of the good bacteria in the intestinal microbiome, which would cause a lot of side effects, including diarrhea, digestive problems, and so on and so forth. So you don't want to stay, you want to do, if you're taking the drug forms of uh, antibiotics, you want to take the full course, whatever it is, 10 days, make sure you take the full course to ensure that you kill off all the, uh, the um, infective bacteria, but you don't want to take antibiotics routinely. They are not benign drugs, again, because they kill off certain bacteria in your body which are considered, um, which are considered uh, beneficial. Uh, so um, that's, I think that's about it for, uh, for the, there's other, there's other, of course, there's other natural antibiotics, but uh, I think these are probably the, some of the more effective so-called natural antibiotics. Uh, they could be used uh, if you're, you know, if you're in danger of a more serious infection, your best bet is to use the drug antibiotics because they, again, they are uh, more standardized each pill of a, let's say, drug form of antibiotics contains the same amount of active ingredient. You can't be sure of that with the natural antibiotics, but the natural antibiotics are useful, you know, if you take them early enough 
they might ward off disease. So that's what I'll say about them. If you want more information about nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, uh, effective fat loss techniques, ergogenic aids, hormonal therapy, uh, supplement science, which ones work, which ones don't, women's health and fitness, and many more topics, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics publication, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's 30 to 50 pages every month. No ads, pure, solid information. That includes my 60 years of study and personal experience that I impart in each issue. There's no better source of information on nutrition and exercise science on the entire internet. I also, I have professional writing experience. Uh, the uh, Applied Metabolics is written in a, uh, in a matter that it's understandable by anyone. If I have to use technical terms, I readily explain them so you don't have to reach for, a, let's say, a medical dictionary. Uh, I guarantee you will learn something from reading Applied Metabolics. It also includes information that's not available from other sources. So subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. When you subscribe, send me an email. I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I, I post new information on exercise, science, and nutrition. Hot off the press. Brand new stuff. I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything pertaining to nutrition or exercise or anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics. Again, that only pertains to current subscribers. I don't answer unsolicited questions. So that's about it. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, Go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Thank you for listening.